and welcome to the preview show brought to you by the Known and Ever podcast. And listeners, it is summertime. We are bringing you in for a mid-season break special where we give you Dave's great big summer quiz. I am joined this evening by regular preview show panellists, Adam Dennett, and of course, the main man himself, the headliner of the preview show, Dave Statman Roberts. Dave, Adam, how are you both? I'm very well. Yeah, how are you? How are you two? I'm good, Adam. How are you? Yeah, great. I couldn't uh, couldn't not get involved in uh, in some more quizzing after last year's Portmaster drama. Definitely, I do. I do forget that you are a reigning Portmaster champion. That's how you ended up on our show, wasn't it? That that was your prize. Yeah, that that was the prize. <laughs> I do look at that sometimes. I think poor Adam won the Portmaster quiz and then ended up being saddled with Team None and Ever for the rest of his life. But uh, but yeah, no, it's it's good to have you on, Adam, because as as our listeners will know from um, a few hints and that we dropped to the back end of last season, you are going to be joining the preview show team on a much more regular basis, focusing special attention on the Fantasy Premier League. Of course, our listeners will know that because that's your. I say area of specialty. You've given me some right lame ducks over the years. So I don't know whether you're, you're scared of me having done it and you're trying to sabotage my FPL progress. But but yeah, you're going to be joining the team full time, the previous show team next season. Yeah, really excited about that. I were I was slightly worried after we got relegated that the FPL section were going to going to get dropped and now we're going to have to start focusing on fantasy championship. Or I don't even know if there is one. Um, but hopefully it's just one year, one year, and we'll be back in the Premier League, and uh, and we can have both features again. But no, I'm really looking forward to be part of the part of the preview uh, preview show team, and hopefully still get invited on the analysis show every now and again. Yeah, definitely. Oh yeah, you don't get away that easily, Adam. When the known and ever team get the claws stuck into you, that's it. You're in. You're in for life. Um, Dave, that's a very good point. I think we must have discussed this about the FPL. I, don't, I think we used to do it before when we were championship, before we got promoted, didn't we? I don't think we just do it because Burnley are in the FPL. I think we just do it as just a team thing, don't we? Is there a championship one? I can't remember. I'm not sure that there probably is. Um, I've only done it uh, more recently when we've been in the Premier League. So I, don't, I can't think going back oh. um, whether, I, whether, whether it was there because I, I didn't get involved with it until the, until the last well, three or four. Yeah. Years. Well, the none and ever podcast I mean I've been with it since 2010 and we did it um a couple of seasons in and of course most of that time has been post Premier League but there's been like three seasons in that where we're in the championship and we never stopped it okay a few oh listeners that was that was a nervy moment already um <laughs> right okay Dave um why don't you just introduce us please and tell our listeners why we are rudely interrupting their summer with an unexpected preview show drop uh, well, hopefully not rudely interrupting. Hopefully, people have chosen to come along and uh, and see the answers to the uh, to the quiz. But uh, yes, we had Pope Master last summer, which was slightly different. We had individually recorded episodes. We had quarterfinals, semi-finals, and a final. And although it was really good, I really enjoyed it. Adam came out as our winner. Um, we decided to do something a little bit different, try and get a few more people involved. So we did. Um, well, I set a quiz. Um, the quiz was 15 questions. There were five uh, one-part answer questions. They're the first five. Then there were five uh, two-part answer questions. And then finally, there were three more detailed questions that had three answers each. So five plus 10 plus 15, the maximum score available was 30 points. And we, what we said was, um, because it was the way you can go away and look at the answers and certain people might have a tendency to use search engines for it. We said, well, that's fine. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. That's that's fine. <laughs> you can use search engines. You can use reference books. You can use any websites that are out there. Any other websites out there to use? Uh, there's one or two. Um, so the questions as a result are slightly more difficult as a result. We, we took that into account that people will be able to use um, other sources. So um, if anyone looked at it and thought, well, ooh, that was a bit tricky, um, that is why, because, you know, we wanted to make it so that, well, hopefully, so no one got all of them right. We'll see at the end whether whether uh, anyone managed to outbox me and get all 30 out of 30. That will be a, a challenge. Yeah. Well, I have to say, listeners, if producer Matt had remembered to send me the question sheet, I would have definitely outfoxed 
uh, Statman Dave, and I would have got all 30. Um, Adam, obviously you're our reigning Portmaster champion. Um, I guess a couple of things for you. Um, were you disappointed not to be able to defend your crown? And either way, how did you find the new format? Uh, yeah, it's something something a bit different. I were obviously expecting uh, some form of quiz this summer because um, of how successful Portmaster was last year. I really enjoyed it. Everyone who took part really enjoyed it. We had a little um, Twitter group and everyone had positive things to say about it and uh, all the reaction to it were great. So um, I think it, it were a different sort of challenge. Obviously, that were more um, probably to think on your feet really quick mm. quick thinking trying to trying to trigger memories um quite quickly and this one was yeah a lot more detailed there were a lot where i had maybe an idea and then I had to go digging like dave said different different sources um get creative with a few of them and uh, no i really really enjoyed it but yeah it were again um very challenging and uh time consuming as well but no i really enjoyed um. it again so Hopefully, Same. I'll be as successful as last year, but uh, I've heard the list of contestants and there's quite a few who do quite well on uh, on the regular quiz questions, so there see is. how we get on. Our finalists for this summer special reads like the who's who of VIP preview show fans is our regular listeners who've been with us for a long time who always contribute to the quiz and they, man, they stepped up, didn't they, Dave? They, they, they definitely stepped up to this one. Uh, they certainly did and we we did try and keep it a little bit low key what we didn't want to do was to kind of put it out there and then you know things being discussed on um social media and message boards which would kind of have spoiled it a little bit i think we wanted to be an individual contest so we did it on a, a single request basis we received a request and then matt sent out the uh the question sheet and we did ask people to keep that to themselves um and largely that's uh, worked i think and we'll see how uh, how our respondents got on Indeed. Well, shall we get straight in there? I think what we're going to do is that for those listeners who didn't submit a request for an answer sheet, this will all be brand new to you. So we're going to give you the benefit to play along at home um, and we're going to give you the questions and we will give you the answers at the same time. So you don't have an awful lot of time to think about this, but hopefully you'll find this relatively entertaining and really, really expand that claret's knowledge. We're going to start with section one. Now, these are the five single point questions, Dave. So you get one point for every correct answer. Is that correct? That is correct, yes. Excellent. We started off off the bat with the first of one of our players who's no longer with us um, in the revolving door that is Burnley's transfer window. And it is about our ex-goalkeeper, Nick Pope. Dave's first question in his big summer quiz was, how many Premier League clean sheets has Nick Pope kept since joining Burnley? Okay, this one I think was probably relatively easy to find out. Dave, what was the answer? Um, well, yes and no, um, oh. depending on where you look and how you define it, because um, I think it's maybe slightly a trick question. So if you did look through in detail, um, the actual answer we were looking for, uh, for anyone who's playing along with us, was 46. But... Um, a slight sub-note to that one, um, that is the Premier League's definition of clean sheets and you have to play the entire game. So you remember uh, Nick Pope came on for his debut as a sub when Tom Heaton uh, injured his shoulder. That was, I think, about 37th minute, something like that. It was shortly before half-time. Um, Burnley won that game, 1-0 against Crystal Palace. And obviously there was a clean sheet, a team clean sheet. But because Tom Heaton played the first 37 minutes, Nick Pope played the rest, uh, neither individual goalkeeper gets credited with a clean sheet. So that's why it's 46 and not 47. We did have, um, I think, one or two answers with 47 in the answer, but I had to disallow those. The correct answer was 46 clean sheets. Well, is that, is that a league thing? So where you substitute your keeper, neither keeper gets credit for the clean sheet? That's the definition of it, yes. Wow, did not know this. Excellent. Well, there you go. Not only are we giving you facts and figures, we're just giving you a little bit of, of background information as well, listeners. We treat you. We do treat you. Question number two, then. Um, now, I'm, okay. I'm, I'm going to read question number two out. Oh, okay. Go ahead. Why? Why do we need to? Why do we need to? Because, well, uh, because of a slight issue, um, the original question was, 
Um, in Burnley's last 25 matches in the Championship that were broadcast live in full on TV in the UK, there's only been one defeat. But can you name the opposition team which beat us? Now, I've got a confession to make in that I slightly miscounted on the question and the original answer I was looking for, several people got, but I was also getting several answers for another team. I thought, well, I'll just go back and double check. And sure enough, if you count back, that match was the 25th game. So in actual fact, the question should have been, um, in Burnley's last 24 matches in the Championship, who was the only team to have beaten us? OK, well, that's all right. You're allowed a few mistakes, Dave, don't worry. You've rectified but, that. And how are you going to deal with this in terms of, of answers, though? Anyone who got either can get it right. Ah, excellent. Everything. OK, well, what were the two answers, then? Well, I was going to ask you, I was going to put it back to you, Natalie, seeing as you didn't submit your answers to the quiz, whether you uh, well, remember the last well, well, well. time the in the championship. Just, just hold your horses there, Dave Roberts. There's a very good reason why I didn't submit my answers here. And that's because a certain producer, Matt, never sent them to me. I put my name in the hat. I sent the email as instructed to my own inbox. I mean, it still didn't get through. I literally said, please, can you send me it? So, yeah, I went on holiday and I didn't get one. Uh, so I do not know the answer, I'm afraid, Dave, because I've not had the benefit of time to answer that question. So, no, I don't know. I, I genuinely, I wouldn't know. I could probably give a, an educated guess, but um, no, I, I wouldn't, not live on air, I wouldn't know. Uh, well, the correct answer we were looking for was Leicester City. They came to Turf Moor and they beat us 2-0 in, uh, in that match. Chris Wood was one of the uh, goal scorers. Uh, that was in April 2014. Um, and as we say, we, if you count back the 25th game, again, this is championship games only and ones that were broadcast live on TV in the UK. Um, we were also beaten by Hull City. That was the Yeah, that was a boxing day. So if, yeah, that, if, I would have guessed Hull um, if I'd have submitted it because just purely because that was obviously, we went 23 games undefeated after Hull and Boxing Day, wasn't it? Well, no, this is going back into the previous season because it's only televised games. So we're not talking about... Oh, good Lord. Yeah, oh, no, then. The I, would have, I would have guessed games. Hull and got it right by just by accident, which would have been peak Bromley. That would have been great. OK, well, that's fine. Well, we're going to give we're going to give questions to both. Well, maybe that's what happened. Maybe people have put Hull for that reason and, and it wasn't that. But when I did check... That was the um, that was the 25th game back. So um, interestingly, though, when we, we do play um, Huddersfield Town at Huddersfield, the opening day of the season, um, if we uh, remain undefeated in that match, or hopefully we'll win it. And um, if we remain undefeated, that will be the 25th game consecutive game in the Championship televised game without a defeat. So we do have a really really good run generally in the Championship. Yeah. Game in the last two seasons but particularly for um televised games we've done very well yeah definitely so quick quick side point on that adam and quick pause there we could have done with an easier start to championship life and an away game at huddersfield couldn't we uh, yeah but i think i think any it's the unknown in it with all the changes yeah. we've made um they've obviously got to a playoff final last year teams react differently to that they've lost the manager Quite unexpectedly. Oh yeah, of course. Um, I've I've not seen much of who they've brought in and what they've done, but uh, you'd expect them to be well up for it. Home game, first game of the championship. It's never going to be easy, but um, nice to have a, a local game again and um, one of quite quite a few this season. Um, just yeah, over the definitely. Pennine, so it should be should be a really fiery atmosphere for the first game. Yeah, it's a great, it's a great away leg as well as Huddersfield away. It really is. I enjoy that. Um, anyway, moving on. So question three, Dave, we're rattling through this. Again, listeners who are playing along, this is our single point round. So you want to get one point for your correct answer. Dave, your spreadsheet is, is literally tilting me beyond words. What is going on here? Question three. Which opposition player holds the record for the most goals scored? against Burnley in competitive matches? I actually know the answer to this because my dad, this is a stat my dad told me. Ah. Yes. Well, you probably saw it on my Twitter because I don't think it's uh, particularly <clears throat> um, around. I, I did some research going back and I've uh, tweeted about this previously, so anyone looking at my old tweets probably got help with a few of these. Um, mm. Quite a lot of people guessed Harry Kane. Um, but as we know, football uh, began long before 1992. Uh, he's only scored 10 goals against Burnley, um, which is nowhere near 
the correct answer, which is 21, mm -hmm. scored by, are you going to tell us what the answer is? Jimmy Greaves. It is Jimmy Greaves. He scored 15 goals against us for Spurs and six while he was at Chelsea. So 21 yeah. is by far and away the most uh, goals by any opposition player against Burnley. Yes, for some reason, that's one of those weird, obscure facts that my dad's known. I think that's obviously a lot of the time when my dad was really, like, obviously in his youth and he was watching all the games when Burnley were obviously Spurs were a massive rival and stuff. So it's probably why it sticks out to his, his head. Um, OK, rattling through them then. Next up is question number four. Again, single point answer. So far, Burnley have played 304 Premier League matches since 2009. But what is the club's aggregate goal difference in these matches? Oh, Dave, that is a stinker. That uh, is a stinker. It is. It's, it's a fairly simple one to work out because all you need to do is look at the uh, league tables for the season. Um, and if you look through those, we've had eight previous Premier League seasons. In our first season, 2009-10 uh, in the Premier League, we had a negative goal difference of uh, minus 40. Not very good that season in terms of goals against. Um, it got slightly it got slightly better. We had minus 25 in uh, 14 15 when we got back, and then the last six seasons have been uh, minus 16, uh, minus three in 2017 18 when we finished seventh and qualified for Europe, uh, then minus 23. Uh, then a minus seven, minus 22, and minus 19. So when you add all those eight up, you get to the magic number, which is minus 155. That's not great. <laughs> that, that, that's not great. I think I expected that to be to be a minus figure, uh, Adam, but minus 155 is pretty harsh. Uh, yeah, I've uh, got to admit, I had to go to the Premier League website and just do all the totting up and... Um, after I was saying before before the show tonight to Matt and Dave, um, most of my day job is adding up. Um, so if I'd have got that wrong, I'd have been very disappointed. <laughs> yeah, would have been uh, would have been after you. Okay, well, yeah, I'm I'm very I, I can't believe it's that it's uh, it is what it is. Um, sorry, I've lost my train of thought. You did just give the answer to that, didn't you? I'm not Minus one five. Yes, yes, thank you. I just had a horrible feeling then. Do you know when I was trying to like bring somebody else? Then I went. Has he actually given this one? See, listeners, the same preview show, the same chaos. Someone Different lineup, same chaos. Give me a break. You know, um, jet lag. you know what? Sorry to interrupt. You know what would be um, really good to know, Dave? What would be our record against teams outside of the top, traditional top, like four, five, Ooh, six yeah. clubs? We like, tend man. to do okay against them. I've got a page. I think a lot of the minors will be in them big games. Yeah, you can go to Premier League um, and then you can, I've, I've done sort of big six yeah. and other, so you can actually look at that. I'll give yeah. you that. I bet it's nowhere near. I bet it's nowhere near. We've had the odd weird one where we've conceded like a load in a fluke result, but all of those teams were a lot closer, weren't they? So who would you Man be dis City out of there, It's probably only minus. That's true. <laughs> yeah, that's true. <laughs> so so what, what, what would we be saying, Adam? We'd get rid of United, City, Chelsea, Arsenal, Spurs and... Liverpool. Leicester, Liverpool. Quite oh yeah, Liverpool. <laughs> yeah, mentally forget about them. Um, and get yeah. get rid of them below minus fifty, easy. I think. Mm. Yeah, I think you're probably right. And in fact, I'm going to guess minus forty two. What's your guess, Adam? Bang on minus fifty. Uh, excellent, Dave. Let us know who won. <laughs> well, we'll set that as the question. That's the question. That's today's question. So when we do the next preview show, we'll um, we'll, we'll be on that. it. Yeah, we remind me because I'm going to forget that. Um, excellent. Right, final question in this round then, question number five. Now, Dave, this one's been highlighted again. Are you been messing around with these questions again? What is going on? Well, the question was, um, and I, I've changed my mind. I'd written the question and I kind of changed it and I'll, I'll explain why. Uh, the question was, in 123 previous league seasons, how many times have Burnley lost the opening league game? Now, that was on the quiz sheet. And when I originally wrote the question, I did it the other way around. I said, well, how many wins have we had? And then the little answer box said wins equals rather than defeats equals. So we sent them out and we quickly realised and we, we sent revisions out to people. So um, in case anyone didn't see that and, and has put the other answer, but accepted both. But we are after the correct answer of the number of defeats we've had in those 123 opening league games. And our record, if you're interested, is... 
played 123, we've won 39, drawn 35, and there have been 49 defeats. So we're hoping, yeah. certainly, we don't have defeat number 50 in a couple of weeks' time. No. I'm quite surprised at that, to be honest, because I know we're usually quite slow to get off the mark with the exception, obviously, of the European qualification season, if we look at modern seasons. But I would have thought would have I didn't I don't remember us losing that many. Like I would have thought the draw would be higher, but but never mind. Um, okay, well that is the end of of the first section. Adam, looking at those questions, how do you think you've done? Um, well, I think I've got them all right so far. But from like I said before, very different sources. Um, a mixture of Dave's Twitter definitely highlighted the Jimmy Greaves <laughs> one to me. I remember that this season. Um, and then the Leicester one was just because we've been on that massive unbeaten run. Uh, I just remembered that game being on the telly and Nugent and Wood getting getting the goals yeah. and thought that's got that's got to be within the 24, 25 games yeah. or whatever it was that um, that were there. So I didn't didn't go back any further than that. Um, and then yeah, like I said, totted a few up and uh, I got, actually I think I got lucky on the Pope one because I went off the fantasy, fantasy Premier League website how many clean sheets he got. If he'd have come on oh, before yeah. the 30th minute, I'd have got that wrong as well. But luckily enough, he came on in the 37th and wasn't sure. credited with a fantasy Premier League clean sheet either. So, yeah. That's so, true. yeah, I think I'm on five out of five, but I'll let Dave Ooh. give the update. Yeah, go on, Dave. How, how have our, our uh, listeners done so far? We'll give us some scores. Uh, well, we've got to five of our respondents got all five of those right. Um, Adam, yes, you were quite correct. Uh, correct. You got all five right, as did uh, Andy Richings, uh, John Robertson, Matthew Winkley, and also Tom Whitaker. We've got five so far who have got all five correct. Doesn't mean to say they're going to win, but five out of five for our top five. Good stuff. This is going to be close, I can tell. However, I suspect that these questions are going to get harder as we get into the next section. So let's move on to those questions then. So don't forget, listeners, these are two part questions, a point for each part you get. Right. Dave, a very quick clarification of the rules. Do they have to get both right or can they just get one point and get one of the sections right? Well, that'll come into play later. But yeah, if you get one of the two, you get one point. Um, obviously, Fine. if you get yeah. both of them, you get two. Good stuff. Excellent. Question number six. All of Burnley's last four sendings off have something in common. They took place either in the 90th minute or injury time at the end of the match. Who was the last Burnley player to be sent off in the first half of a match? And what was the year? I know this. Do you? I do. May I answer it? If you wish. I can. Jeff Hendrick, away at Watford. In what year? It's either 2000, it's the 2017-18 season, so 17, because it was early on in the season. Yes, it was 17. Yay! I knew that. And the reason I know that is that we'd, um, we'd driven down to Watford and we got stuck in a horrific accident um, on the M1 on the way down or wherever it was. And Mr Bromley massively took one for the team and because we were late drove to the stadium dropped me off outside the stadium and said go in don't miss any of the game I'll go and park and I'll meet you in there took him like 13 14 minutes whatever to get into the ground by the time he landed we were down to 10 men and we're one nil behind <laughs> so it's just one of those games that always sticks in my mind excellent excellent well you see there you go that was nice and easy I do like it when I know that one's right um that's quite, I mean, it's quite, it's quite interesting talking about Burnley players get sent off today with our disciplinary record, isn't it? Uh, well, it makes it more difficult there haven't been that many, although having said that, we did have two quite late on last season, didn't we? We had uh, uh, Nathan Collins' uh, red card, then Matt Lowton sent off as well. So we had two red cards and we hadn't had any for quite a while. But uh, yeah, um, they do tend to be uh, late in the game when we've had them. And that was uh, an unusual one, the fact that yeah. it was uh, early, in the, uh, early in the match. Yeah, I'm not friends with Nathan Collins. Gets himself sent off in a key game, concedes a handball in the last game of the season, then decides to disappear off to join 
wolves and leave us. <laughs> anyway, I'm not bitter, listeners. Uh, question number seven, then. Let's move on before we get any further. Uh, ben Me scored the only goal in Burnley's 1-0 home win over Spurs in February. But against which team did he score his first goal for the Clarets? Also with a header. I do not know the answer to this, Dave. Ben Me header. Um, I'm that. We had to have a Ben Me header question. Um, we were obviously all sad to see the skipper leave at the end of last season, uh, but Ben Me still a Burnley legend, um, and we that's why we have this question in there. And the correct answer was, um, it was against Millwall, and that was in 2012. So a point for Millwall and a point for 2012. Yeah, it feels very weird, doesn't it, Adam, talking about these players that have already left us because they still feel like they're part of our DNA, but they're not with us anymore. And I mean, it's going to be an absolute nightmare that first game of the season because I'm not going to recognise half the squad. Um, were you surprised to see Ben Mee not signed to anybody yet, Adam? And where do you think he's going to end up? Um, I'm hoping he ends up in the Premier League because it would be a sucker punch if he, if he wasn't to um, have left us for that. To carry on playing at the highest level, but uh, yeah, I think I was just more disappointed. I think it were it were more just the hope of he's been our captain, he's been such a legend for us, been with us for such a long time, been such a role model, uh, always speaks brilliantly, always represents the club very well. Um, I think it's kind of mixed feelings. You've got to uh, you've got to be grateful for everything he's everything he's done, but also disappointed that that he's decided to move on. But um, yeah, good good luck to him. I hope he gets. Um, I hope he has a successful next move. But yeah, really really disappointing, especially with him, Tarkovsky, and Pork have, have been so like colossal for us over such a long period of time. Um, it's going to be an unknown, which is um, kind of exciting for for the new season. Yeah, of but course it is. Also a bit a bit scary as well. So. Every uh, yeah, every yeah. successful adventure starts with the unknown, Adam. We're going to be fine. If you remember way back in the day, a certain Ben Mee came to us with Kieran Trippier from City on loan and we knew nothing about them and look at where that ended up. So we've got a couple of new City centre halves. We've got players all over the place. There is a Burnley legend or three or four already signed for us and we just need to get going. That's the way I'm looking at yeah. this. The day we signed Trippier and me, I think we'd sold the Eagles or a very similar time anyway. And I remember being absolutely gutted about Eagles going oh, in. I, I detested him. These two coming in. Um, but yeah, let's, let's hope they're half as successful as, uh, as those two. Yeah, uh, the definitely. New lads from City and, uh, and they'll do all right. Good stuff. Okay, let's move on. Uh, Dave, question number eight. You set for our listeners was... Can you name the oldest and the youngest players to make their Burnley debut during Sean Dyche's time as manager? Ooh. The oldest one's pretty obvious, I would have thought, but the younger one, I wouldn't know. Go on, yeah. does that have a misery? The, the oldest one, I think, is the easy one. The easy one. Let's start with that. Uh, well, I'll, I'll go through in terms of my logic on this. Um, uh, it was a slightly tricky question. Um, we got a uh, variety of answers, right and wrong, um, and I have double-checked them all. Um, there were actually five 18-year-olds who made their debut under Sean Dyche. Uh, they were Aidan O'Neill, Dwight McNeil, Matt Thompson, Lewis Richardson and Owen Dodgson. Uh, but of those, Lewis Richardson was the youngest. Uh, he was just over 18 when he made his debut. Um, and at just over... Well, you want, do you want to tell us who the other one was, soon as you thought you knew? Oh, it's got to be Crouchy, surely. It was, yeah. Just over 38. Yeah. He just turned 38, I think, uh, a week or two uh, prior to making his debut. Uh, Peter Crouch was the oldest. And the only other one anywhere near was um, Paul Robinson. He was the next oldest at 37. Quite a few oh, people. Oh, yeah, I wouldn't. Yeah, I wouldn't. Be. Paul Robinson as the... I've um, forgotten about him. I think we had a few Wayne Hennessy's as well, but he's, he's a little bit younger. Uh, but, yeah, yeah, Peter Crouch is definitely the oldest. Yeah, I mean, I, I literally I saw the answer on the sheet and my, my, um, the script went down just as I was thinking it in my head, but I did think it in the same day that I would have guessed Crouchy. So, so yeah, that's, uh, that, is, that is definitely a fair game. I'd forgotten about Robinson. Uh, question number nine then. Who were the opposition the last time Burnley scored five or more goals in a competitive match at Turf Moor? And what was the year? Uh, yeah, tr tricky one, this. Um, Burnley have scored five goals away from home more recently. Um, but we never scored five goals in a competitive match uh, during Sean Dyche's time at manager, not at Turf Moor. 
Um, we then were obviously after a home game. Uh, we did manage it. I think we beat uh, Nice, I think it was, 6-1 in a friendly, but we weren't after friendly games. It was just competitive matches. Uh, so we're actually going back pre deitch into um, uh, Eddie Howe times. And yeah. the correct answer we were looking for was a, a 5-2 win, home win, over Peterborough United. Uh, that was on the 15th of September 2012. Uh, and that match also included a Charlie Austin hat trick. So, in answer to the question, the last time Burnley scored five or more goals in a competitive match at Turf Moor, the correct answers were for one point, Peterborough United, and 2012 for the other point. Good stuff. Okay, question 10, the final question in the two part round. And that was who was Burnley FC chairman immediately prior to Barry Kilbey? And going back a bit further in time, who was Burnley FC's chairman immediately before Bob Lord? The first one I know, second one I've got no idea. Yeah, we so, want to make we want to make it a challenge. I suspected that um, yeah, people would have to dig a little bit on this one. I think even if you remembered uh, the days of Frank Teasdale, which yeah. was the uh, correct uh, answer to the first part, he was um, chairman in the. Uh, well, between May 1985 and December 1998, so that's over 13 years, um, Barry Kilby took over. I think it was um, uh, an AGM at the very end of 1998. Uh, that was the easier part. The more difficult part uh, was actually uh, Wilfred Hopkinson was the Burnley chairman, a less familiar name. He was chairman not for very long, between October 1952 and June 1955. But that was immediately prior to Bob Law taking over in uh, June 1955. And he was chairman until, uh, well, shortly before his death in uh, 1981. Mm, good stuff, good stuff. Um, Adam, section two. Are we still on for 100% here? How are we feeling? Uh, yeah, I think so. Uh, there are another, another, another couple of lucky ones, though, because... When, uh, when Dave said Owen Dodgson then, I definitely hadn't looked up his age. I've looked up the other four, thinking I'd remembered the youngsters. Um, so I got a bit lucky with that. And we, I went for Peter Crouch as well. But just as he was reading, I thought, I never checked how old Brian Jensen was. Did Jensen play under Daesh or not? I can't, I can't remember. But that um, just like, what's his head? It's a bit yeah, of a scare. I think he did. He came, on as, um, he came on as sub. But we're only about one. I think going back to the question... We're only about ones who were making their debut, wasn't it? Oh, re debut. Oh, sorry. Debuts, yeah, that's yeah. Right. Just, yeah, that yeah. was the case yeah. when you were reading it then. So, yeah. Um, yeah, so that, that was a bit lucky. Okay. Um, and, yeah, the, the Wilfred Hopkinson one, good God, I did well. It took me a while to find that one. I can't remember where I got it from in the end. But, yeah, that, that really did take some digging. Good stuff. Um, would now be a good time to have a quick uh, referee of the rules here. Technically speaking, can Adam be our reigning our second in a year, sorry, second in a row champion for the summer quiz. Now he's actually officially on staff. I don't know. Are you going to uh, uh, overrule it if he wins? I don't know. We'll see. Let, let's see if he gets there first. But I've started to get a little bit nervous that we're now two thirds of the way in and he's, he's got a 100% record. And I'm, I'm wondering whether our loyal well, listeners will call I've, foul. I've not, I've not told you where we're up to with the. Okay, no, uh, don't. please go ahead. Yes. Uh, end of round two, where are our scores? Yeah, the second section, so we've got all the two points out of the way. There, there was 10 points available, so in total, including the first part, um, if you've got 15 points, you've got maximum at this uh, stage. Uh, and we said there were five who'd got all the first five right. Um, in terms of 15 points at this stage, we're down to four. So we did lose uh, one, Tom, Tom Whitaker. Uh, oh, lost, also lost on the point. Uh, but our four who have got 15 out of 15 at this stage, not necessarily mean they're definitely going to win, but um, Adam Dennett, yes, 15 out of 15. Uh, Andy Richins also got 15, as did John Robertson and also Matthew Winkler. So we've got four, uh, four left after the 10th uh, question. Oh, well, at least we've only got one non and ever staffer in with the mix if i had tom in and adam i'd have been i'd have been sweating a bit on this last round i'm not gonna lie no well let's move on so remind me again dave section three is three They're parters three part questions so we're after three answers and there's a point for each answer if you got two of the three you would get two points so in, in terms of this first question 
a first three-part question. Again, there's a clarification on this one. The original question was, um, only one Burnley player has ever scored a hat-trick on his debut for the club. But who was he, which team were Burnley playing, and what was the year? Now, it transpired when I was looking at this and double-checking it, there were actually two. So if anyone got either of these answers... Um, they get the points. So, um, again, being doubly generous on that one, because we did get some people who got both players. Um, so in terms of these players, remarkably, playing the debut for Burnley uh, and scoring a hat-trick on debut, the one I was thinking of was um, Ian Lawson. Um, he scored actually four goals, not just a hat-trick. He scored four goals. Um, Burnley beat Chesterfield in the FA Cup. That was in 19, January 1957. Um, and the other one's going back a lot further. None of us will, uh, will remember this one. Uh, Tom Nicholl, um, he scored a hat-trick in a match against Preston North End, again on his debut, which is what we're looking for. And that was back in 1891. So if you had Ian Lawson, Chesterfield, 1957, that would have been three points. Or equally, if you'd gone back further in time and gone for Tom Nicholl, Preston North End, 1891, that would also have been three points. Good stuff. Is that the last of our qualifications, Dave? Have we got any more coming up? Our listeners are going to want to know what's going on. Um, uh, no, I think yes. Good, good stuff. Right, question number 12 then. Back to normal. Three parts to this possibility of three points, listeners. The question is, can you name the last three... Oh, my God, Dave, what is this question? Can you name the last three Burnley players to score for the club on their birthday? This is absolute classic Statman Dave question. Where on earth? Like, what, what is this? Come on. This, this is an evil question. I've this got, is I've got to admit, it's shocking. <laughs> um, the, the chance of any Burnley fan knowing it was slim, um, it's an extremely convoluted process to try and work it out. But one man did that. One man took a database of matches with dates and took the details of players' dates of birth matched the two and found out when people um, scored on their birthday. And in the past, last couple of seasons, I've tweeted about it once or twice. So um, there were uh, three people who got it right and got all three players right. And I suspect the only way they've done that is they've probably seen my tweets. Um, so welcome <laughs> to uh, the three of uh, them who've gone back and looked at my historical tweets. Uh, and what are the, what are the answers? Well, the answers were um, Neil Grucock scored on his birthday in 1986. Uh, Graham Lancashire scored in 1991, his birthday. And the most recent one is David Ayres in 1994. Uh, there are more than that going back. Uh, Jimmy McElroy, for example, he scored, I think, on his 21st birthday. Um, and that, But there's not many players. There's only about, I think, eight in total. Uh, but the three recent ones, which are the ones who wanted for this, were Neil Grewcock, Graham Lancashire and David Ayres. Ooh, David Ayres. Ooh, David Ayres. Question number 13. Prior to Chris Wood, blech, who scored a hat-trick away at Wolves in 2021? Oh, no, sorry. That was terribly bad worded. I'll, I'll, I'll do that again because the, the intonation in my word was going to make that. To, uh, of a confusing question. Me. Yes, it was. I ignored your punctuation, Dave. I was uh, I was reading too quickly. Prior to Chris Wood, who scored a hat trick away at Wolves in two thousand and twenty one, can you name the only other three Burnley players to score a hat trick in an away game since the year two thousand? This is an Adam Dennett question. I'm pretty sure he's got all three of these right, and I can think of one of them from previous. I think we've had this question in the preview show. We may um, have done. Yeah, so I know one of them. Um, but why don't you tell us the answers, please, Dave? Uh, well, yeah, from a, a, a very difficult question um, to one which was slightly easier, I think, this one. Uh, we just wanted to know the names of the three players. Uh, the ones we were after were uh, Ade Akinbae, uh, we had uh, Andrew Cole, and we had Charlie Austin. Uh, I think Ade Akinbae was uh, at Luton... Andy Coles was against QPR and Charlie Austin's, I think if I remember rightly, he came on as a sub and scored a hat-trick at Portsmouth. Yes, Charlie Austin was one that I would have guessed. Uh, I fully expect Adam Dennett to get all three of those because that question is right up his street and he's sm grinning at me in the thumbs up or on the camera, listeners. We think we've still got Dennett in the, in the mix here. Question 14 then, our penultimate question of this summer quiz. Can you name the last three Burnley players who made their debuts as teenagers 
who went on to make over 100 appearances for the club. I would have got this wrong. Um, the second one, I'm looking at the answers now. I think the, 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 the two of these I would have got right, but one of them I would have guessed something else. So who were these, Dave? Well, uh, perhaps this was the most difficult question of all, as no one got all three names. <gasps> Can you believe? Oh, um, so let's it get was into the that question time. that stopped anyone getting a full set of 30 out of 30 for this quiz. So I'm declaring oh. that. Um, the, the one player that seemed to stump our quiz entrance was the, well, the, the, the three names were uh, Jay Rodriguez, yes. Danny Ings and Dwight McNeil. And it seemed to be Danny Ings. Yes, uh, definitely. People. I think um, Dwight McNeil people would have got straight away. Yes. Thinking and back Jay. to Jay Rodriguez. Yeah. Um, other ones that we were getting were Chris McCann. Who, Chris McCann who, was the one I would have guessed, yeah, yeah. definitely. He, he certainly was in there, but in terms of the, uh, the last three... Uh, we were after Rodriguez, Ings and McNeil. I think I would have probably looked at Richard Chaplow as well, because he joined us quite young, didn't he? And he, he did quite a lot. So I but would again, have guessed... It's going, it's going, before it's going back too far. Yeah, I would have... I would have, I just I would never have guessed any Ings ever. Well, there you go, listeners. With just one question remaining, we know that nobody has beaten Statman Dave's quiz and he's sat here with a very smug grin on his face. Oh, listeners, if only you could see him right now. He's very, very delighted. He's done this on purpose. Maybe he sabotaged some of these questions to make sure that nobody beat him. But let's, we've still got the small matter of who is going to be our summer champion. And we've got one question left, Dave. That question is oh, the first mention of the main man on the previous show. Prior to Vincent Company, yay, the last three Burnley managers to begin their tenure at the start of a new season are Chris Waddle in 1997. Stan Turnant in 1998 and Steve Cottrell in 2004. But can you name the three Burnley players who scored the Clarets' first league goals of each, sorry, the first league goal of each of these new chapters in the club's history? That's quite a long question. So I'm basically saying that in Chris, Wool, Chris in each of these managers, in Chris Waddle, Turnant and Cottrell's first league game in charge, who scored the opening Burnley goal? Well, not necessarily the first game, because uh, as I'll uh, as it will become obvious when I certainly look at the first one, um, it took us quite a while to get off the mark. But it's, yeah, Burnley. Ah, first yeah, but the first goal, goal in there. Yeah, okay, that's fine. That makes sense. Ooh, that's um, that's a toughie. Well, I, I wouldn't even have guessed either of these. I'm afraid. OK, so I'll give you the answers for these then. Going back to 1997-98, uh, we failed to score in any of our first six league games. Uh, there were three nil-nil draws at Turf Moor and three one-nil away defeats. Uh, we had scored um, in a League Cup game. I think one or two of our respondents had come with a scorer of, uh, of that goal, but that wasn't the same player who scored the first league goal. And it was, in fact, uh, Paul Barnes, um, he eventually scored our first league goal that season in our seventh game. That was a 3-1 away defeat at York City on the 13th of September 1997. We had a very poor start to that season. Uh, we did a lot better in the second half of the season and we did eventually survive on the last day with a, a win against Limith Argyle. Um, 1988-99, um, Andy Payton, he was the uh, first goal scorer. He scored both of our goals, including a second-minute opener that was in the opening league game against Bristol Rovers. Uh, that was at Turf Moor on the 8th of August, 1998. Uh, and then finally for Steve Cottrell, uh, going to the 2004-05 season, uh, on the 7th of August, 2004, uh, Micah Hyde scored the first league goal of the Steve Cottrell era. That was in a 1-1 home draw against Sheffield United. Um, Andy Gray, who would later join Burnley, he scored the Blades equaliser. Hmm, that's, that's a bit of a shocking question. Were you quite concerned at that point, writing question 15, that there'd be too many people on maximum points and you needed to throw a, a bit of a spanner in the works, not knowing that you'd already done it? Um, no, I wasn't sure which... I, I thought the birthday one might catch people out, but obviously people had gone... I mean, Adam will maybe explain to us how he got that one, um, but there were him and two others who got um, uh, who got that one correct. But yeah, I think there's a, there's a mix. So I wasn't really um, 
thinking too much. I thought, yeah, there may well be someone who gets them all right. But as we know now, there uh, there wasn't. There wasn't. Close, though. Um, Adam, we're not going to do any major spoilers here. So don't give us what you think your score is, because I want to do a build up to who's won the quiz. But are we feeling confident that we've retained our title or are we unsure? What are you thinking? I think it might be going to a tiebreaker, to be honest, Nat. I don't want to ruin anything, but uh, that's, uh, that's my feeling. Um, Do you yeah, think you'll way. be in that tiebreaker? I'm hoping so. Um, uh, that's not what I asked. You know me. Don't well, give me no politician's the, uh, answer. Yeah, the, Do, you uh, think, do you think you are, Adam, or not? Yeah, but do, okay, do you want to know my reasoning? Do you want to know my reasoning? I do. Yes, I do. I think I think I know what score I've got, and I don't want to ruin it. No, I don't want to ruin it. I, oh, I okay. Hope so. I Let, hope let's so. move on but then. The, Dave. Let's the move teenagers on. one were a killer. Yeah, um, that was I'm, a hard I'm quite, one. I'm quite glad it were Danny Ings and it threw everyone because I were absolutely. I were done. I went back to the nineties for mine. I went for Paul Smith. Oh wow! Yeah, that is going back. Paul mm. Smith. Gosh. Well, Dave. No, I never drum roll in the absence of a sound effect. Come on, give us the scores on the doors and who's our champion, or is there a tiebreaker? Well, as we know, no one got 30 out of 30, but our top three were in third place. We had on 27 points, uh, one of the players who'd got all of the first uh, 10 questions right, but then slipped and lost a few in the last round. Uh, Matthew Winkley got 27 points. And then, as suspected, we have a tie for our leader. We had... Uh, Adam Dennett got 29 ah! points and uh, tied on 29 points also was um, John Robertson. If you're interested, no! you can tell me that um, John Robertson went for Dwight McNeil, Jay Rodriguez and Chris McCann. So he'd overlooked John. Uh, Danny Ings in that list as well. Wow, an absolute tiebreak between member of staff Adam Dennett and reigning Portmaster champion and our very own VIP, John Robertson. Oh, my God! So it went to a tie-break. It did go to a tie-break. It, it did. Tie break. Shall I explain what we did for the tie-break? Please, break? yep. Go um, for we it. We did this in advance. We, we thought it might come to this. So what I asked was for uh, all of our entrants to come back with two tie-breakers. We'd do one tie-breaker, and then if that was um, the same, we'd go for a second tie-breaker. And the tiebreakers were even more evil. And um, these were asking you what was the combined attendance for Burnley's Premier League home games? So we said previously, All of them. Terms, yes. And you be well. That that we we got a we got a winner from the first tiebreak. It's not surprising because there's such a, a big number. The correct answer was, uh, if we add all those up, uh, we had 200 and, uh, sorry, 2 million 601,621 was the correct answer. That's the combined attendances for all of Burnley's home Premier League games to date. 20, now, 20 million? Sorry, 2 million 601,621. I'm not sure how you got to that. Carry on. I'm just going to do my maths. Well, you, well you've got to bear in mind as well, if you were multiplying things up, is you, you've got an average attendance around 20,000, but you've also got um, uh, no behind closed doors games as well. So that's kind of uh, thrown a, a little bit of a spanner in the works. But you'll be amazed that one of our two uh, tie-break contestants was within three of that. No! Answer. Yes. Shut up! Are you kidding me? I'm not kidding you. Um, <laughs> Three out of two million and six hundred one thousand six hundred twenty-one. Yes. Three. You can, you can guess there wasn't a guess in there, and there's been quite a lot of uh, work and digging going on. Yeah. <laughs> the discrepancy. Um, but yeah, we had uh, one of those answers within three. Would you like to know who it was? Oh, I do. Who was it? The winner within three on the bonus and our uh, quiz champion for 2022 is John Robertson. Ah! Oh, your title! Oh, but I'm, I'm 
absolutely made up for John Robertson. He's an absolute gem of a guy. And that is, and I'm sorry, Adam, but well, not only has it saved me the quite stressful thing of deciding whether you could have it or not now you're on staff, um, to get a tiebreaker of that magnitude within three is a thoroughly deserves champion. Oh, God, that's, yeah. uh, are you gutted? I'm absolutely gutted because I think I I was thinking I were in a good position there. I think I was sixteen thousand off. Uh, yeah, so I was even then, that's 2. pretty impressive. Eight million, yeah, but I obviously didn't do as uh, as much hard graft as uh, as John Robertson. You do you do well to beat that, wouldn't you? Um, that's you know, incredible. Well, well done, John. That were that's amazing, and it did because yeah, he, he's been it's been such a good quizzer over such a long period of time on the show. Yeah, he has. Yeah. I, was, I was quite gutted he wasn't in the Portmaster last year, so it was slightly tainted that I didn't get to beat him last year. So that's uh, that's going to fuel the fire even more. Now. I was just going to say, now that's going to make it <laughs> even worse. Now you didn't get to beat him last year. Maybe, see, if he'd have played last year, you wouldn't be reigning champion. You I need to up my game, though. No, well done, John. That would be exactly. The, the the previous show could have been a, a trio of, of uh, Dave Roberts, McAbromey and John Robertson, not Adam Dennett, you see? So it's the way that the world works. Well, John, massive congratulations. You are now for the next season the known and never summer quiz master. We can't call you Pope Master, but we'll just call you, we'll find you a title. Um, I'm pretty sure there's a prize for the winner. I'm looking at producer Matt. Yep, yeah, there's a prize for the winner. Um, and we'll get that sorted. So if you want to drop us a message in the VIP channel that you have uh, with your address, in fact, I think we probably have it actually. Uh, we will get that posted out to you in the summer. Um, along with a known and never sticker and yeah all good Dave thank you so much that was thoroughly enjoyable uh, what an incredible we are so very lucky to have you but an incredible summer task you've given us all there that was hugely entertaining um, thank you to everybody who contributed commiserations to those particularly Adam who didn't win um, and that's all we've got time for we're going to leave it there um, let you get on with the rest of your summer we are going to let the revolving door of Burnley transfers carry on spinning for a while because pretty much anything we put out at the moment is immediately out of date because every single day we seem to be linked with a new player. But certainly in the next week or so, we're going to sit down with the transfer special and look at who's gone, who's coming in, what next season looks like, what this possibly means for our future formation, um, if anybody else is likely to go, um, and what our thoughts are ahead of the new season. So keep your eyes peeled for social media and we will get those out there. Uh, my thanks as ever go to everybody who has contributed to this summer special. Producer Matt for just getting us all organised. As always, he's the MVP of the None and Never podcast. Uh, to Statman Dave, obviously, for pulling that those questions together they were killers but they were great um adam our fellow panelists on the previous show um and runner-up of this summer's quiz but finally you the listener for downloading and listening to this episode your support is very much appreciated and we would not be here without you we will be back shortly so in the meantime enjoy your summer enjoy the heat wave take care of yourselves and take care of others this has been the none and ever summer special brought to you by the none and ever podcast until next time <laughs>